Hello, how are you? This is Jilly Bling and I have a project using Hello Harvest Bundle. So the bundle includes the stamp set and the dies and they're lovely. And you probably first notice this um, split, I think it's called split texture, split card textures die and it comes with two different dies and one of them is more of a grid pattern and then the other one is more um, once again a grid but a little bit more floral so here's the first one and this one I colored it I had a good time coloring it colored on the inside then this one again I colored and I have three different well we'll use the third option for the background paper so this one is Cajun craze card base this one is um, crumb crumb cake card base and finally this one is crumb cake and we'll do one today using um why am i drawing a blank melt the mossy color mossy meadow i almost was saying mellow moss i guess you know how long i've been around stamping and then the designer paper got that right here it's so pretty look how pretty this is so there's pumpkins and then diagonal stripes. I love this print. I think I want to do something with this print and the bundle Fond of Autumn. And this one on the back, I love that. I'm wanting to color it. Look how pretty that is with the little butterflies on it. And another black and white texture on the back. Texture or pattern. And then there's this one. And on the back are just some little fern leaves. And then the ones we're using today, and those are more the solid pattern with a hint of white detailing. And then on the back, it's the black and white. So that's the paper. I love that paper. And you know, I, I can honestly tell you I'm not that much of an autumn person, but I'm really liking these. So these two are coloring the pumpkin because that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to do that first. And I love how it turned out. And then this one is, okay, let's do something different. And I colored in the designer paper with blends. And I purposely did it um, leaving the tips of the leaves a little bit white. Just, just to be a little bit different. Just so you don't have to color in exactly. And it was kind of cut fun coloring it in. And then on the inside, trying to keep it a bit simple. Heat embossed with gold. And then this I did with... Um, the blends, that's Daffodil Dark, Daffodil Light, and then I use the Color Lifter to kind of give it an ombre look. And you could do that in any color you like. Of course, I was leaning toward Parakeet Green, but that has nothing to do with autumn and fall and falling leaves. The, um, the Daffodil looks good. So that's the last one. So the dies, the dies cut out in the bundle, the Hello Harvest bundle, it cuts out the pumpkin and the bouquet and all these little swirly things. There's three little swirly pieces. It cuts out the little sunflower. Oh, and I kind of like that. The stamp set, that's this right here with the little sunflower. Okay, so the die pieces also have We'll use the banner. It has these. And that. That's the top. Cut out one of each of these and that goes right on top. And that is the pumpkin. Or it cuts out the pumpkin hole. Here's some of those little swirly pieces. But it's, it's a really nice, fun bundle. Oh, and then today, let's use I think this one because I've used the kind of florally one so yeah let's use this um, square rectangle one okay so those are the dies we'll use today Ooh. Ooh. okay so let's get pieces so the card we're going to make is nothing like these but they're all made out of the same products which is kind of fun So I have pieces here. 
And the ink pads, let's see, we'll do sponges today. And ink pads, I have four of them over here. Memento, Versamark, Crumb Cake, and Cajun Craze. And we'll do a bow. Okay. Let's start with the paper base and work our way up. And this piece, this one, gets this put on. And what's nice about this die is it perfectly fits our card fronts. So see how there's just a little bit of a, a border all the way around? How perfect is that? Okay, let me run that through. So here's that. Then to attach these, I'm just going to use glue. And you might think, oh, just stick this one down, that one down. We're going to do it just a little bit different. Just because the paper, I have it and it fits like almost exactly. So I'm just putting liquid glue right around the border of the cutouts. And then I'll put just a few little touches in here. Random places just to hold it. That should be good. Then, you know, I'm going to do it the other way. And because it's liquid glue, I could scooch it around. But you know what? Because I'm doing, um, um, why do I keep on wanting to call it mellow moss? Mossy meadow on top of. Oh, I'm doing the wrong side. <laughs> it's okay. It's going to be stuck down. Isn't that funny how that happens sometimes? And the glue dries clear, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So all of the little holes from the die cut are covered up. But, uh, oh, what I was saying, it's because the designer paper base is um, mossy. And the card base is mossy. Even if I didn't get it perfectly lined up, it would be just fine. Okay, that is good. And I'm going to do glue around the whole outside and just stick this onto the card front. You could use your tape runner or whatever you have. Just a little bit, just in case I didn't get the perimeter full, fully glued. Okay, just like that. So the other samples, I have them going um, portrait and landscape. You could do however you like. This one is portrait. This one, and if it's just fine, is landscape. This one has the crumb cake backing. Oh, these are going to be similar. That's okay. This one, the pumpkin's right in the middle. That one's off to the side. Okay, so card front is partially done. And I love, I love this right here. Wishing you the loveliest of day. I kept on trying to do other things, and I put them on the inside, and I like this too. You're such a blessing. But that's my favorite. I guess I could do the hello right here, just plain. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, over here I have white paper. Let's do that banner greeting. I'm going to stamp it in Memento. Perfect. Someone will like that. Okay. And I think I pulled the banner out. Get that lined up. That looks good. And here it is. And you're like, wait a minute, that's vintaged. So to get it a little bit vintaged, I took a crumb cake, 
sponge, crumb cake ink, and just kind of brushed around the edges just to apply a little bit of color. And I'll leave that out because that's what we'll do the um, pumpkin stem with. Speaking about pumpkins, can we use that? Pumpkin and stem. So this I'll cut out of, this is pumpkin pie paper. There's two different sizes. I'm going to cut those out, and then this piece is for the stem. Okay, hold on. And then those little swirly, scrolly things, I cut out a bunch of them. Not sure if we'll use them all, but they sure are cute. And there's three, three flavors. There's this one that's like the super swirly, I think. Is that the swirliest? This one here has a big swirl. Then this one is more straight. I think vines, our cucumbers are going crazy. And I think pumpkin vines look like cucumber vines. But look at all of that. I don't know why I have so many. Oh, I know why. Okay, so do you see the three differences, different types? Okay, so let's get to building our pumpkin. So the pumpkin, this piece goes on there, and then this piece, you could put it here, but I think it looks better tucked in a bit, just like that. But it would look better if we sponge this. Okay, we'll get to those in just a minute when it comes to decorating. So I'm going to use Cajun Craze for the pumpkin. I could use pumpkin with pumpkin, but Cajun Craze um, is a bit of a deeper hue, so it's a little bit bolder. And let me see how much ink I have on my sponge. If you have a lot of ink on there, it looks like that. The less ink you have on the sponge, the softer the sponging becomes. Look at that. And when you put it on there, you could tell it's going to look great. And if you want, because the dye, see this little bit right here? That creates texture on the pumpkin pieces. So, to pick up some of that, if you want, you can make it a little bit darker just by brushing over the top. Not too much. We don't want to turn the whole pumpkin pie paper into Cajun craze. But when I hold this up now, you could see how the sponging accentuates the work the dye did. So, around the edges. Oh, I'm running out of ink. Let me try. Ooh, not much ink on the sponge is good for accentuating texture. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, but around the edges, you might need a little bit more. Okay, so I have a quick story. I'm not going to take too long on it because I get frustrated. Last night, went out to family dinner. We're about to pack up and go. Somebody came in and said, hey, who has the white car out there? You might have been involved in a hit and run. We're like, that's us. So this is at family dinner. We went out this time. And um, there were a couple of, I guess they're not teens. One, of, I think the girl was 19 and the boy was 20. Because we offered, because they took a picture, we offered them a beer and they're like, we're not old enough. Um, but I guess the guy backed out and he looked and was like, oh, it was just a tap. And he left just like that. But we didn't know at the time. We just thought, oh my gosh, it's hit and run. And this girl, guy, this little young couple took pictures and they're just standing there. They go, do you want me to text him to you? I have his picture. 
I have his vehicle, and I have his license plate. And after we took the picture, he took off and he went left, and then he turned left again, and we're like, oh my gosh, they saved the day. Because the license plate, and you know, I've got the license plate with the bling around it, and I just put on a new one, like, was it earlier that day or the day before? Anyhow, sure enough, the license plate was pushed so hard that the screws were pushed out of the bumper. Anyhow, the license plate was completely gone. We're like, oh my gosh, where is the license plate? It's probably still on his vehicle. So, checked everything out, and as the kids went to walk away, they go, oh, check underneath your car. There's something under your car. And it was a license plate, so that's good. We still have it. And then we were just walking away from there like, oh, it's not terrible damage, and just a little bit of damage. And then Tony goes, come on, let's go down here to the left, and oops, let's check out that neighborhood that he said the guy drove into. So we we're driving around and then thinking, this is crazy. And if any of you have known me for a while, you know that I've gone through sh shoulder surgeries. That was a hit and run, and I ended up finding the guy. Do you know where I'm going with this story? We found him. So we're like, okay, we had to do the right thing. And of course, my heart, it was like flashback to years gone by. And um, we looked up the police department, and we went over there, told them what happened, said we found them, but we didn't do anything, we just left, and um, made a police report, and the guy came out and took pictures, and he's like, that's hit and run. If it's hit and run, that is a crime. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, hold on, I'm going to do some, I have to do some more. So there's a, a die cut for these two. I was going to do them, but that's okay. I'm all carried away in my story. So, the policeman came out, and he um, he did a report, and took pictures of our car, and he goes, yeah, there's some damage there. He should not, he should have at least, by law, you have to at least leave a note if you don't want to go into the place and look for the owner. He goes, and I suggest you don't go back by there because Tony was wanting to go back by. And I'm like, you can't do that. Anyhow, I'm glad that the cop said that. So we just went home and the cop says, I'll go over there later and I'll get his side of the story. So long story short, like I said, I'm not going to get all flustered. Um, he called us maybe half an hour later. He goes, okay, the guy's name is this. He admits to tapping the car, but he didn't think he caused damage. Therefore, he thought he could just leave. And here is his, he has insurance, and here's his policy number. So we, we went to bed last night thinking, oh, what a relief. And we found out that he works as a handyman at the restaurant where we were. So Tony just went to call it in to State Farm, and State Farm says, that's not our policy number. <laughs> so it isn't as easy as it should be. But the insurance company said, but if you have the VIN number, and I'm like, we can't get the VIN number. Anyhow, Tony called back the insurance, or the, the policeman, and he got the, um, they gave him the VIN number. I, I, I guess that's something you could do. So with that, we're going to, continue pursuing because it's probably just a new bumper so that we have the area that holds the license plate anyhow that's our exciting news it's not resolved yet good thing there is no no injuries you know hold on I had I, I had a plan here and I took a picture on my phone okay so my plan was this one could go over here because I laid all these pieces out trying to get the right the right look that's the right look probably if I can I might pop up the bottom leaf on that one leaf oh. 
excitement. Excitement, I don't want. I don't want excitement. Then the kids, the wedding, another reason we had to call insurance. I wonder if she cringes when she sees people calling. Um, the wedding venue is like, okay, you need a million dollar policy before we can um, do the, the wedding venue. We need that before we could consider it booked. It's like, how do, you, how do you even do that? Where do you start with that? So we were talking with insurance about that. And she's like, oh, just go to like weddingplan.com and they, they offer it for much less than anyone else could get it. Okay. So busy times. Okay, little double bow. And this is gingham ribbon, black and white. Little double bow. So that's all my excitement. That's it. Went to bed thinking it was all resolved and easy. No. So that could go there. So I'm going to start with a glue dot. And you know, I was always doing glue dot and then following it up with glue. And I thought, well, I didn't always do that. I don't know why I started doing that. But this morning I came out and one of my little bows had fallen off. And it was like, that's why I do that. Why I follow it up with glue. It's kind of like changing a baby diaper. But that's the little legs. Okay. Check down under there. Check it out. Okay. And that definitely will hold it. Because even if the glue dot lets go, the glue's got it. Um, and now, oh, some of these things. So the long one, this one, the one coming from the top. So a card that's kind of simple. So it really just has a banner, leaves, and a pumpkin with bow. Because of this and all these little bits, it's getting a bit fancy, but I don't think too fancy. I don't think so. Okay, so I'll put glue on just the ends of this. Or for right now, I'll just get it stuck. And then I'll lift it up and I'll put glue on the part that sticks to the card. That way I don't get dirty. I don't like being dirty. So that little couple that took the picture... And I say little, just because they're young, and the girl was very, very thin. That's just how she is. You could tell. But I keep thinking, I so appreciate them. And I said to her probably at least ten times, thank you, thank you. Because without them, we would just be paying for it all on our own. Um, but I keep thinking somehow... I wanna, and she goes, I just try to be a good person. And I said, you are. I said, and the police officer knows, we know, my whole family knows. But I keep thinking I wanna, cause I have her phone number to gift her something or something, I don't know. Then I'm thinking what was important or what would I want at 19 years old? Oop, there's a little dog right there saying, I wanna come in. I'm going to put pearls on this. I have some new pearls. He's not going away. I'm going to have to get him. Hold on. Okay. Can you smile? Smile. Smile. There you go. Come on. Go night night. Okay. 
Okay, so that's looking good. So these are, they're titled Red and Green Adhesive Back Pearls, but they are in the catalog. Oh. Here, I get this ready to show you. Rustic Harvest Collection. In the collection, you get, if you get the collection, which is right here, you get everything listed on this page, which includes the embossing tray, plus brushes, plus an embossing buddy, plus beautiful gems and the paper and spark. Oh, that's basic black 12 by 12 paper. Anyhow, it's very, very pretty. So in the back, they always have an index. And in the back, they call these festive pearls. But the little label on them, that calls them red and green adhesive back pearls. So whatever name you call them, it's fine. It's cute. This car is a little busy. I don't know. I had, I had to put bling on it. I mean, that's my middle name, right? How about gold ones? Well, let's see how it looks. You know, that looks, I think that looks good. So I'll do one right here. It kind of is like an add-on to the leaves. And these are just random little growths, sparkly growths. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. So for the inside, for the inside, I don't have a plan. I do have a paper. And I do have a pumpkin. Already done. Don't need a bow. I have these things. So the inside, I think it just wants words. And then maybe, maybe a little bit of the greenery. Or maybe I'll put a few gold. I'll do a few of the gold. Because I was in the middle of my story and I didn't. I, I'm sure you all know how to heat them off. I'll do gold leaves kind of hiding from under the pumpkin. Okay, just two. Then I'll put them into the gold powder. Don't you like my gold powder holder? So on the back of the sign-up sheet for the project boxes, I always put an inventory of all the dyes that are in the box. Just because you don't know how many times people say, okay, one of the dyes are missing, but I don't know which one. It's like right there. They're all listed. Okay. what there's these little swirly things hold on hold on hold on these things okay wishing you the loveliest day I like these but I haven't used the you are missed wishing you the loveliest day oh okay I'll, I'll go for it right here you are missed and that could go into black to go with the black ribbon you are missed. Okay. But I want to do one of these swirly. I think this one. That one almost looks like a poof. Oh, but I like this one too. Um, okay. In the heat embossing, so Versamark, I will do... This one here.
And then this is going to go here. Okay, this is looking good for the inside. And a few of these. No bow, but I kind of like these. Whew, of um, I don't think it's going to go. To me, that looks like a little bit of wind. Whew. I guess it could go on either side. Oh, that would look better. Okay, I already did something with that, so. Okay, so this is going to go on with liquid glue because it's the inside of the card. Oh, okay, so, well, you could tell I'm thinking about this. Back to that little couple. If you have ideas of what a 19 and 21 year old would like, and I saw them after we were checking everything out, right before we left, they went over to, um, I think it was like 7-Eleven, and they're getting something, they're probably getting rock stars or something like that, because I know the high schoolers love those energy drinks. Um, so maybe even like a gift certificate to 7-Eleven. I don't know. I just want to like to do something as a thank you to them. Because if they didn't take the picture and we would have been paying our deductible, well, Tony probably would have just taken a, a screw and screwed it in place and said, there, that'll hold your license plate. Anyhow. If you have ideas, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, this could just be a creep along the bottom vine. Then I think there's one more. A third, a third flavor. This one. Right there. It's just where it's going to go. Just like that. So normally I'd flip this paper upside down, put tape runner on it, stamp and seal, but because it's a warped paper, because I did heat embossing on it, look at that. You could tell I'm kind of recycling paper. I'm going to use liquid glue. So our printer Actually, it's probably more like my printer. Somewhat new. It's one of those eco think tanks because I was tired of paying $35 for a cartridge of ink when only one color was out. And yeah, I printed a lot of indulgent, colorful uh, things. Okay, problem here. My pumpkin is too far off the edge of the page. <laughs> don't you all just love improvising? I don't know that I could cut it straight. Okay. You're probably saying, okay, what are you going to do? I am going to pretend like the glue isn't on there. It will go right back on in just a minute. And I'm going to make my paper smaller. Anyhow, my printer, it won't stay connected. So if I go to print something, I have to go on the floor, put the password in, reestablish connection, and then it's just fine. But I don't like going on my hands and knees <laughs> onto the floor every time I want to print something. So somebody says, you just need a dedicated cable and connect it to your computer. So the computer is connected to um, the printer directly 
Okay, so I went out and I think it's called like a coax cable. So I got a coax cable because Amazon has everything. And got that hooked up. It's still doing the same shenanigans. So if any of you are computer wizards, <sighs> comments, let me know. I don't know what else to do. And it's just because I don't like to get on my hands and knees underneath the desktop and type in the password, which is nine, ten, ten characters, uppercase, numbers, and all. Okay, so that's today's card. And I think I need to do videos more often so I don't talk your ear off when it does come time. Isn't that cute? Are you ready for fall? I'm not quite sure that I am, but... I do like this. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great day.